So check out this really crusty old set of four, six, eight blocks. Cast iron. I love these things, to be honest, and I can't wait to get them cleaned up. This was a gift from my buddy Andrew Evans, the gentleman who come and helped me with the roof uh, on the shop not too long ago. He had picked these up at an auction and brought them to me, and I'm glad that he did. They're rough, probably from the 40s, I'm guessing, as rough as they are. They've been used in a shop or in some setup for a very long time. And somebody's used them for welding as well because they got spatter on them. What I'm going to do is clean these up, we'll just wire brush them first, then stone them to get all the super high spots off. Then I'm going to surface grind them. That way they're a nice set of usable setup blocks. I can see these coming in handy on the canty or the drill press. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean these up and uh, turn them into a good set of blocks again. Buying these new, several hundred dollars. So we're going to freshen this set up and uh, we'll have a nice set of blocks. There's been several instances where a set of blocks like this would come in handy. So I can't wait to get them cleaned up to where I can use them. So here's a neat little tip that I've shown before, and that's cleaning your stones. These are precision stones here, but this is just your standard bench stone. And what I like to use is a white gas or camp fuel. Just a lightweight oil. And man, it works great. Just lifts all that goo and debris right out of the stones with almost no work at all. Really. It's actually surprising how good it works. So large blocks like this can be really handy, especially, you know, something like this that's kind of old and rough because you can use it as you need it. If you need to put a hole in it, you can do that. You know, if you need to change it or machine a spot on it for some certain setup, you know, it's okay because it's not some super uh, valuable piece. But a, a big box parallel like this, not only could you use it to bolt stuff to on the milling machine or use it to stand pieces up on the drill press to give you the clearance, on and on and on. Something like this extremely handy. And I'm trying to make sure that I get this part as square as I can, within reason. So I'm using the uh, Sterrett number 20 machinist square and some feeler gauges just to check and see how far off square the side that I'm uh, referencing there is to the bottom. And I'm just going to take some simple feeler gauge stock, set up under the piece. And uh, then when I machine it, or grind it, I don't have to remove any more material than what will already Close. be necessary to Close. clean this thing up. Closer than it would be if I didn't shim it. We'll get it better once these faces are not so horrible. So I don't make a whole lot of progress on these. I do get one block surface ground. This was kind of just a tangent that I got off on on this week. I really got pulled like 10 different ways this week. I had a lot of obligations that I had to take care of that didn't include grinding the set of blocks. But you get the idea. You know, from this point on, it's really the same thing over and over and over again. And surface grinding is like watching paint dry. So just thought I would show you this... Uh, adventure that I got off on and I can't wait to get these done. My buddy Brian Block shows up uh, here shortly and we actually try to scrape in one side uh, you know, just for fun and practice. So I know somebody will ask well why didn't you just put them in the shaper first and uh, you know, get them square and then grind them and the reason for that is the weld spatter that's on these is like glass hard so pretty much anything you use other than maybe some hard turning inserts it would just eat the tool up so Best just to go straight to the grinder. It doesn't care how hard it is. 
and uh, that welds better is just no trouble at all for this thing. So I've got a really big cutter here to grind. It is a, what is it? So I've got a really big cutter here to grind. It's seven inches by one inch by inch and a quarter on the bore of the cutter. I'm going to be using this for a project in it, and I'm going to be cutting the uh, CPVC with it. So I want it to be sharp. And right now, I mean, it's it's not super dull, but it could use it could use a touch up. Um, it's got a few chips here and there, and a couple of the cutting edges, but not enough to hurt anything. So we're going to be putting seven degrees of angle on the cutting edge because it's plastic. We can go with that. And uh, I just want it to be good and sharp and cut really smooth. So that's the deal. And I blew up these cutting edges so I'll know where I start and when I'm done. All right. And uh, we'll fire this thing up and put a fresh edge on this thing. So the blue is just literally so I know where I've been, right? When we grind the edge, it'll grind off some of the blue and we'll know when we get all the way around this thing. It's not gonna take a whole lot to, to freshen up this edge, but see there's a chipped one right there. But not enough to hurt anything, especially with a cutter with this many edges on it. So I'll explain the setup really quick. We've got two centers here. We've got our arbor. We've got the cutter on the arbor, obviously, and then we have a finger, spring-loaded finger, to keep us, or to register on the bottom of the tooth that's going to be ground. So we'll just grind one and then click to the next and so on. That's it. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for what I need it for. And there's no reason to, you know, make it any smaller than it is.
So that looks pretty good. It is definitely sharper than it was. There's still some damage on some of these teeth and it should probably be ground back a little bit farther than what I did. But that's probably good enough for, for what I'm doing with it anyway. So I got a little side project that I want to share with you. I'll share with you as much about it as I can anyway. But this is a massive chunk, two feet by two feet by two and an eighth inch thick. So 50 something millimeters thick, pretty big chunk of CPVC. Now what I need to do with this is cut two strips that are eight inches wide out of this. And I'd like to do it, you know, one and done, not cut it in the bandsaw and then have a secondary op to clean up that ragged cut. What I'm hoping is that I can take this over to the K&T mill, use some spray mist, spray coolant, slow speed cutter, and just get a nice finished cut out of this and be done. Now, CPVC, a little higher temperature rating than standard PVC, what you'd find in your cold water pipes or vents and stuff in your house. Uh, CPVC is around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly, and standard PVC around uh, 140. This also is less prone to bacteria growth because it has higher chlorine content in it. So, a little bit better stuff, a little more expensive, but uh, if you need the higher temperature range, then you know, you have to go with C, you're going to have to go with CPVC. So that's what we need to do. Let's go get set up in the K&T mill and see if we can't successfully cut some big strips out of this piece. So I'm hoping I'll be able to reach through that uh, big piece. I'll have to put on one of my larger cutters. I gotta change the arbor as well. So we'll see. Not exactly for sure that I'll be able to do it. But I think so. Oh. So on this setup, I think clearance is gonna be the name of the game, really plastic so it shouldn't be too hard to cut but what I've decided to at least try first is the A style arbor and support you see how small that bushing is compared to the B style which is much bigger there's a lot less clearance under that because the plate's going to stick out quite a bit here so hopefully this will work we'll see this is the cutter we're going to try first which is a eight inch wide cutter eight inch wide <laughs> it's a quarter inch wide it's eight inches tall so we'll get set up and we'll try that. Hopefully that'll be able to get through that big chunk of plastic. So unfortunately, I don't have all of the machining footage that I did on this this week. I had a memory card failure and lost probably 25% of the footage that I shot. But I'll show you what I got, and uh, I mean, you'll get the idea. But unfortunately, I lost some of the good stuff. Can you help me, Noel? I just want you to spray a little water on that while I'm going. Just spray a little water on that while I'm Go ahead and spray a little in there. Yeah, just like that. Good 
So we're right at the maximum travel on this mill. It has just enough to get through this workpiece in one go. Now there's gonna be very little clearance here. That's why I chose to use the clamps that pin into the side. In this case, it didn't matter if I drilled a hole in the side because I'll just flip this part around once I make my first cut and then make the second cut on the other side and I'll use the same holes for the fixturing on the second cut. So this is really neat. First time I'd used these clamps, these particular clamps. It's only set I have like that, but your standard clamp, right? By the time you put a nut on that, it sticks up above the workpiece about three inches. And this one will allow me to travel uninterrupted the whole cut. That's the idea. So let's get this dialed in and then uh, pretty much ready to make the cut, I think.
So I'm tramming in this big piece of plastic using the cut side that I generated from the other cutter. Nice, smooth, flat surface. Just squaring that up with the machine and then I'm going to take this one inch wide cutter that I sharpened earlier and I'm going to run around the top of this thing making a flange actually that's one inch wide by one inch deep. Now, I haven't went into detail about what this part is because I really can't. It's for my day job. But just one of those things that I got into this week that I had to do and uh, just eat up all my time. But it was fun. It was fun to use this machine to the maximum travel and... Uh, you know, take some big cuts in plastic, even though it's a little easier to cut than steel, but that doesn't make it any less fun.
the holder. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Two holders. A short and a long. Short and a long. I normally use the long. Yeah, there is a blade in here. I can make some up. That's what radius is that? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Four inch. It's fairly wide. It's wider than I would typically use. Clean around these. You know, you keep it up tight to your body and pivot with your waist. Yeah. So that you, if you try and do it with your arms, you have it. Right. Tendency to arc. You know, you go high and low, whereas if you get set to where you know it's comfortable, you can just. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, and it goes yeah. Pretty quick and easy, and you can be consistent like that because consistency probably the most important thing you're after. And it's, these rubbers eventually they get wore out, but I guess we've still got a pretty good one in there. So just to where it's held and that's it, basically. Yeah. You're not cranking that down. Something about like that, but yeah. what your thing will do on the short end. end. Yeah. What is this? That's an extra gear. So if you come off the edge and you bash it into the side real, real, real hard. It's phenolic. And it, and it jams up, it'll just pop the teeth off that gear. So that's just an extra gear. Hmm. Just a little fen phenolic gear. Yeah. Huh. You just, you'd have to crash one pretty hard because pretty I've, I've run them off the edge before and had them catch and kick yeah. back and I've not ever broke one but when I bought this it come with it because I guess apparently they had broke one. Yeah. <laughs> Long with an extra set of brushes. I don't know what these bolts, bolts are for. Bolts probably for the handle. Oh yeah, they hold the handle on if you're using it. Yeah, your scrape marks look a lot better than mine. Steve's over there doing precision. I'm a bush hog over here. So Brian wanted to try to scrape in the other box parallel from the set that I had. I've already surface ground one, but the other one is in the vise here, the big blue vise, because it's a larger surface and gave us more area to practice on. Now Brian did attend the Richard King scraping class, a far more advanced at this than I am, but both of us are still are not pros. So we're just, uh, you know, he's trying to transfer some of the knowledge that he knows to me and... Uh, you know, we're just kind of having fun, hanging out, trying different stuff, seeing what works.
so the shop is pretty messy at the moment. Uh, I've been real busy in here lately. And uh, the mess made me think of this, the old sign that I got the other day. And I'm gonna hang this up on the wall. It says, good housekeeping. This is your home away from home. Please keep it clean. I'll show you this in a second. Let's see what Elizabeth found. So what have you found? The cutest thing I've ever seen. What is it? Can you see it? It's looking at her. Ah. <laughs> oh, hold on. Is that a, that's a frog. Yes. Oh, I can't see it. You're gonna have to, oh, man, it's bouncy. It, let's get closer to the ground where yeah. it doesn't it's flop. flop on the ground. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. it's so hard to film. That is a extremely small There's frog. My thumbnail twig. Wow. <laughs> it's the little guy. That's something. I've never seen one that small, actually. It's not going to That I can remember. Mm. Focus camera. You're going to have to get back just a little. There you go. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That is a, <laughs> a little frog. Where'd you find him? He was right over there where your um, humidifier yeah. thing. Don't run away. <laughs> go put him back where you found him. I'm going to show up. Okay. All right. So there, there it is. That's a good looking old sign. Um, pretty heavy duty. I like the color. So I'm going to hang it on the wall back here. Just as a reminder, right? Not that I need to be reminded that, uh, <laughs> I've got to clean. There we go. I like that. Kind of industrial signage, right? Something you'd see in a factory or some sort. Got the yellow and green kind of Reminds me of uh, John Deere, same color as the shaper as well. So, looks pretty good, I think. I like it. So this is red lead, and like in the name, it is lead, so you have to be very careful with it. And it's just a finely ground pigment, and I'm using that as a contrast color. This is a ed straight edge that I have scraped flat, and when I rub this on there, a little bit of mineral spirits, and I rub this on there, and it just takes the sheen, just very lightly, takes the sheen off of the uh, metal, and that way, when I blew this, when I set this on the surface plate against the other ink that's on the plate, the spots will, should, show up and make it easier to see than if you did not use this stuff at all. Now, there is all other alternative methods that are probably safer to use than this, but out of curiosity, 
I wanted to try the red lead because it historically has been used with scraping for quite some time. So that's what that is. Red lead, little sandwich container, small dauber, little bit of mineral spirits to uh, turn it into a slight paste. The stuff evaporates and eventually you get a really nice super thin coating. And you can almost take this up with the white, with the dauber or press kind of hard. I don't know if you can see the difference in the color, but I can see it changing. And you can add it at the same time. So, pretty neat. Almost too dry now, but just takes the shine off of the surface. Now I'm going to spot this with the blue and uh, see how well it shows up. So on the surface plate, I've got the high spot blue. That's what I'm using right now. I do have some of the blue canoid dye spotting fluid, but I don't care a whole lot for this stuff by itself. Uh, the high spot blue really works well. And the stuff that I was sent a few weeks ago by a gentleman in the Ukraine works really well also. But for now, the high spot blue. And I'm going to spot this. See how well that blue shows up? Hopefully you can see that. Because of that uh, red, just the contrast uh, makes it much easier to see. So there we go. The reason for the red lead to make the blue stick out or come out more. So there's a look, a little closer look at the part that I made this week. Actually, you've got two of them. Uh, and I'm almost done, but there's still a little go. I did not show the pocketing. This is a job that i got to do to get paid, right? So I had to, you know, speed up a bit and, uh, and move forward on it. But 3 8 inch ledge, 45 degree angle, inch deep overall on the pocket. On the top, simple inch by inch flange around the top. This will get radiused. So it doesn't look so square. It'll have some tube fittings in it and, you know, a bolt hole pattern around the edge. So you can throw your guess out there as to what it is, but uh, you'll probably be wrong. <laughs> anyway, turned out good. I love machine and PVC, CPVC, whatever. Basically, it's machines the same. You can really hog away at that stuff, but it makes a absolute mess as far as chips. I have a huge trash bag completely full of chips from this, but uh, it was fun and, and I've enjoyed it. So let me show you the new channel art that I got this week. Uh, my buddy Zek Erdman surprised me completely with some awesome channel art. Let me show it to you. So this is a sticker. Actually, it's a magnet that my wife printed off for me of the art that, like I said, Zek Erdman done, son of Jeff Erdman from the YouTube channel E.D.S. Inc. Dot Shandon. Um, he's a friend of mine, been a friend for a long time, and I didn't, I was unaware that his son was uh, really good at artwork. And he completely surprised me with this. It was unexpected. I had to, absolutely nothing to do with this. And he gave it to me, and I asked if I could use it, and he, he agreed. So that is awesome, and I appreciate it. He has got some skills. And I'm sure that he'll be willing to do some work for you if you're interested. I did ask, and he said yes, but I need to clarify a few things before I give out his info. So if you need some channel art, Facebook art, Instagram, whatever, I'm sure that Zek would be interested in making something like this for you, as long as it's not derogatory. He doesn't get into stuff like that. But stuff like this, he does, and I appreciate it. That looks awesome. The detail in this is, is amazing. So thank you, Zek. I really appreciate that, and I'll probably be using this for a while. All right, guys, that's it this week. That's all I have time for, anyway. Completely out of time. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. We really appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower.